<clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> hello, hello, everybody. Uh, Ricardo Wilkins here once again for another decaf edition of Coffee with the Cowbell. So hopefully you've got your cup of coffee. Cheers. And you're ready to talk about teams. And hopefully audio is good. I'm always worried about that. <clears throat> but I think we are good to go. So with that said, um, hopefully as you joined, you saw that the um, topic I uh, was going to talk about today is what is teams. And, and once again, this is coming from the conversation I had this week, right? Most of my topics come that way. And um, <clears throat> so, you know, if you've been using teams uh, for a long time, you might think this uh, topic, you know, isn't going to do anything for you. I think it's still good to get a refresher. Uh, the person I was talking to, um, I felt like, uh, even they, even though they was they were a Teams user, uh, we laid out some things that kind of uh, gave them a different perspective about what the different components of Teams are. So uh, I feel like it could still be worth it. So hopefully you hang out with me and we uh, and talk it up. So let me jump to my uh, demo environment here and let's talk about Teams. And of course, any comments you may have, you can throw in the chat. And I will try to monitor that. I think I'm getting better with that. <clears throat> so um, uh, the first thing I'll say, so as I was thinking about this topic, I was thinking about is Teams the Swiss Army knife of collaboration tools? Is that a fair assessment? It's a similar thing I we used to say back when I was a SharePoint geek. Um, that SharePoint was that Swiss Army knife. And I guess to some degree it, that is accurate. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I like it, but I've heard it said. And that's because, you know, with Teams, there's a lot of it rolled into one. Uh, whereas you might get other products that are really good at meetings or really good at chat or really good at document management. Teams is doing all of that and then some in one package so so what is teams uh, so one it is um, meetings um, most of us might have gotten our introduction to teams through its meeting component over the last couple three years so it is meetings um, again kinda calling out that it is meetings that are in the same pane of glass the same space as the rest of your stuff okay so it's not go somewhere else for your meetings this is your meetings tool in addition to everything else what is teams teams is chat right uh, and we'll dive into the different types of chat that it is but teams is chat or messaging teams is file management just kind of jumping around here so teams is files we have talked in the past that we are or we know that uh, teams is using SharePoint in the background but your files are in the same place as everything else teams is I, I like to say uh, containers to some degree but I mean what I'm talking about are the teams themselves and the tabs that contain things um, so here are the so teams teams is tabs tabs to applications so you know teams is is your uh, place for accessing literally hundreds of applications I mean we're looking at kind of first party apps here but literally hundreds of third-party apps 
Um, and again, calling out, these are hundreds of apps in the same place as your other things, your meetings, your, your chat, and so forth. All right. What is Teams? Teams is calling. Um, not out of the box. I mean, you, you, you do need to, that's a, you know, something you need to add and configure. And in fact, even the demo environment that I'm showing here is not configured for a phone system because uh, if it was, I'd see a dial pad here. So we're essentially seeing, um, you know, some calls in a sense, but this, this, uh, in, in my other environment is, uh, you know, where I can make a call. I receive calls. I have voicemail. So my calling is in Teams, Teams is calling, and it's in the same place as everything else. You notice a theme here. Um, I talked about, I probably should have used this as an example. Teams is files. It's my Teams files, which is SharePoint. It's also a convenient place to get at my OneDrive files without leaving Teams. It's also a place to get at my other files, my Dropbox files, my Box files, my Google Drive files, all of my files in the same place. And, um, and we essentially said, you know, it is apps. Uh, it is workflow. If you start incorporating Power Automate in there, uh, you can see that. Oops. All right. Um, I also like to say it is bots and I, I'm wondering in this environment if I've got a, uh, example, let me see. Oh, I think so. Yeah. This is a little demo <clears throat> I made. Um, so this is a pinned, if you can see it here on the side, a custom pin, you know, of a, an app, which is a series of tabs, one of which is a form for submitting a ticket here. I haven't left teams to do it. A company intranet. It's right there, basically two clicks away, maybe. Uh, and this one's old, so I think I think something screwy with that. It would normally go to a share, the SharePoint site. And then it's chat in this case, and I don't think this one is fully fleshed out. Um, I'm wondering if I've got the working one in here. I don't think so. But uh, in the in the working one I have, this is a chat bot. I think I was using the default uh, travel agent chat bot. You know, you ask it some questions about travel and it and it talks to you. So um, so it is chat with bots uh, in terms of what is teams. So, uh, you know, lots of things there. And in fact, um, let me see if I can find the wheel of destiny because uh, you know there was a for any of my SharePoint fans out there there was a SharePoint wheel that was if you were a SharePoint person you just you had to know and use the wheel in your demonstrations and I, I, I think it's cute that uh, Teams has a wheel too these are what we're looking at here is Office 365 wheels which are massive because of all the things going on in uh, in Office 365, the one I was, and there's the SharePoint wheel there. Oh, nice, my favorite. Um, I was looking for something essentially like, I think, uh, this one, sorta, kinda. Let me make, oops. Let me make it bigger. Uh, image in a tab, and then where's that tab? So if you can see that, um, yeah, this does a pretty good job. You know, um, this may not even be for team specifically, but it is kind of what I was going for. Um, it is document management, and we talked about files. It is you know social aspects of chatting. There's a Yammer integration for those that use Yammer. There's a Yammer integration, nice Yammer integration in Teams. It's your easy access to your intranets and sites related to your teams, your meetings and conferencing. Obviously, this is old. It's still showing Skype. Um, it's your voice, your video. It's your project management here uh, with planner and, and, and tasks and things like that. Um, 
Um, and then certainly your email is still, you know, in Outlook. I mean, there's, there are ways to bring it into a tab, but uh, you could say email Teams is your calendar too. Um, I always, you know, let people know your, you know, your best experience with your calendar is still going to be an Outlook, but you do have a basic calendar here. Um, even if, if you're using bookings, you can kind of see that here as well in the calendar area. If you're needing to do that, we won't jump dive into that too deep. But uh, in a nutshell, you know, that to me, that is at the 10,000 foot view, uh, a description of what Teams is, all of the things that you do uh, in one place. And, spe and speaking of visuals, and hopefully I can find it quickly here. Uh, da, 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 da. Why would be the, because I, I do have a visual that I have used in the past. And I don't think I'm going to find it quickly, but I'm giving it a shot. Uh, let's see here. I basically had a visual that showed all the things that we use that we did with all the other tools now combined into uh, teams and I don't think I'm gonna find it it certainly isn't that old I'll try one more time All right, I didn't find it. Uh, should have had that one ready. Yep, not gonna find it. So but again, it was a visual that kind of showed all the different things that we used to do and all these different uh, tools and then kind of show how teams can get that done as well. I'll find that one day. Maybe I'll show that in the next, next session. So given that 10,000 foot view of what is teams, I thought I'd break down a few things, right? Because uh, uh, the first one is really what is Teams in terms of this this left rail, and in particular, and if you're you know especially if you're new to Teams, uh, some of these things might you might be wondering you know what is the true intent of them. <clears throat> so starting with the activity tab, I'd like to call this the inbox for Teams. Um, all things that are happening in your in the different teams that you're in across your teams in teams are showing here from uh, newest to oldest so this is this is essentially your inbox and in my demo environment it's not very interesting the content that's in there uh, one of my other personas might have a little bit more let's go with, see what Deborah's got going on and hers so this is just a separate persona I'll check out her activity feed not much there either um, but uh, but yeah this is the inbox of, of what thing you know the notifications the feed notifications of things that are happening in your team. Um, there is a way to filter it just on the things that I have done in Teams. Sometimes that could be useful. I'm trying to find something in Teams and I know I initiated the post or I did the thing. <clears throat> so this this filter could be active. I don't. I rarely use it at that filter, but it's there. But otherwise, it's all the things that other people are doing in Teams is in this feed um, because of that you know um, using the filter that I just typed there and you know if I was looking for something that happened in this NC 460 team you can see how it filters and finds those things and then I can also um, uh, I didn't want to do that can also filter on some other common things. Show me all the unread stuff. Show me all my app mentions, um, thing, and, and so on. It's interesting. That, anyway, so that's, that's your feed. Um, all things happening in Teams. If we go down, the next one is chat. 
And I had a interesting convo with that in terms of kind of describing that, you know, uh, to some, some it might seem self-explanatory, but depending on your pers- your perspective, <clears throat> one way to describe this is, this is what you used to use Skype for um, in terms of chat, either group chat or one-to-one chat. I also describe it as similar to your email inbox in the in the case that these are one off uh, isolated conversations with people, whether it be a one to one conversation with a specific person like Nestor here or whether it's a group conversation with multiple people. But I can have these conversations without them being in any team that I own or or I'm a part of. We don't have to share a team to talk. We are just authenticated users in a a group chat. It's also isolated, though, to us. I mean, there's no visibility of this to other people. It's it's private, private chat. Okay. In comparison, uh, the teams area is also chat if we go to post but I would like to say it is it is uh, ch- chatting it or working out loud this is chats and conversations that the whole team can see and participate in <clears throat> and so uh, so that's the the main difference is the visibility of this chat versus the the private chat one to one chat. I don't know what what you may call it. Some people do call this private chat. I don't know if I like that phrase just because it uh it, I don't know depending on who you are it may imply that like really nobody can see it now. A minute, you know, it, it's not secret hidden chat. That's why I don't like private chat. But it is private in the sense that it is not visible to a team of people visible to the people that you initiate the conversation with so private in that regard um, so in the team is working out loud or you know visibly and um, you know some slight differences in that chat a little more bells and whistles when you're chatting in the team versus uh, chatting in the one-to-one or group chat <clears throat> um, but to me that's a, a, a distinction I know that's often people introduced to teams you you may start your experience almost entirely in the private chat area even longtime users tend to do a lot of their chatting in this area even with members who they are fellow team members with you know in this in this teams area i believe that's for a couple of reasons one is I think, you know, that sometimes uh, there's a little bit of angst about talking out where everybody can see, you know, I have a question. I don't need everybody seeing my question. I just want to ask it to this person. Uh, You know, if it's not a great question, I don't want that all exposed. So private chat takes care of that. My opinion is you're also missing some opportunity for some collaboration with folks that you didn't specifically ask. Not everybody likes that, but uh, I think it's cool. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so that's one. That's a, one big difference is the uh, the visibility of it, um, and also the organization of it. As you can see, I can have uh, a set of people, the membership of this team, and then have different conversations um, segmented by channel as well as segmented by conversation thread. So within digital assets web, that's the topic here, but then it's a mock-up review is this is the conversation here. All right? And these threads or sub threads, whatever you want to call them, that isn't a concept in chat. Chat is pretty much a single stream of thought. What you can do, and I've recommended it in other sessions here is, um, uh, titling your chats like I'm doing here to uh, have 
a subject for them. I, I highly recommend that. I think that just is a win-win for everybody when their chats are named as opposed to just um, showing uh, you know the names of the people. But that's about as good as it gets in terms of organizing these conversations is uh, you know naming them. Otherwise, it's just a long stream of thought. I can't, I can't with Nestor here have a, you know, I mean, I guess it makes more sense with multiple people. I can't have another sub conversation easily here. Uh, so that to me is an advantage of coming here. I can have the sub threads. Uh, I can, you know, link. Uh, let's see, go up here. You know, link to a specific. Uh, post in this thread that I want to if I want to point somebody back to it can't do that in the one to one chats um, things like that they do both have files which is nice uh, and which is why I think uh, it is, people find it easy to spend a lot of their time in the private chat area because you really are getting a little you're getting a small little team to some degree in that you get a place for it. You can chat. You can share files with each other here using your OneDrive accounts. And you even have some tabs, not as many tabs as in the team, but you do have some, a few, few common tabs here. So one could get some good productivity out of creating a group chat here. Um, uh, you know, you could fire up a turn, turn this group into, you know, get a call with everybody in a group, all those kind of things pop it out all that good stuff so I get it you know uh, when, when people spend a lot of time in the, in the pri private chat area but I do think they're missing some opportunities for some, some interest in collaboration by coming out into the teams area but my whole point with going there was the distinction between the chat and the, the chat and private chat and the chat in teams chat okay um, so those are the first three buttons this is prop and then these first four for most of us is pro are probably the four buttons we most cycle through in our team's usage. Okay, calendar being the other one where and this one isn't you know very busy, but you come in here to see your upcoming meetings and which I can't find any and to easily join them with just a click. I really need to fill up this demo environment with more content or to just uh, to schedule a meeting. <clears throat> so I, I, I feel like most of us cycle through these four. And of course, if you've got a phone system, you're using that for your calls and whatnot. Um, so that's kind of, you know, from what is from a what is team perspective these four buttons I think personify teams a bit and then as we're in a team you know what is teams teams is channels these nice convenient uh, containers for our topics that we want to talk about different types of channels you know general private and as we talked about recently the um, share channel as well which is still in preview uh, so it's not generally available yet and then our tab so our, our channel chat our files and uh, more and more you know they're adding f functionality from SharePoint here so that you can get a lot of things done right here in teams without having to actually open SharePoint to go get something done and then our tabs which you know also add some additional uh, convenience really um, by placing key assets in a you know one click way of you know accessing them All right so it's a one note notebook uh, I think this must I think this is a oh, that, uh, oh okay that's the files um, I got terrible names on these so it looks like it's two notebooks in here try to find another one a wiki and uh, and then, of course, just others, right? Other apps that we can use. And so especially if and I, maybe I'll end on this note, you know, especially if you are a, a user of a lot of apps as part of your work, whether they are homegrown custom apps 
which uh, are li likely can be integrated into Teams or whether they're a third party app or service. Um, you know, imagine having all of those as tabs or some kind of nice, elegant integration, and then suddenly all the things you do are in one place. And that's when this thing really starts to shine. You start to kind of see the value um, if you haven't already. So to me, that's the 10,000 foot view of, of what Teams is. It's your communication, your files, uh, your apps all in one place. Um, it's it, I've heard, I sometimes call it the new outlook. And I say that just because most of us for all these years spend most of our day in outlook. It is what it is. I've also heard it called the new OS, the new, you know, windows is where we do all things on our PC, right? It's, it's the underlying, uh, you know, platform there. And when, if you are an office 365 user, this is your new OS, right? So um, just something to think about there. So I just thought a nice little reiteration of the basics would be interesting uh, to kind of go through. Um, if you are interested in more of the basics, you know, let me know. I, I, I can certainly, uh, you know, expand on this a, a lot more. I've got slide decks and all that good stuff for that. But I um, thought that'd be helpful. And um, we'll see what, what we talk about next on our, you know, the next uh, session. When we do, we'll grab our coffee, either decaf for this 9 p.m. I'm still trying to uh, get the more, find a good morning time uh, where we don't need to decaf. Uh, might, I might try to stick with that Saturday, 8 a.m. Eastern is the last time I tried that. But in, in either case, we will uh, check back with you for Coffee with the Cowbell.